cuerpo alegría Macarena, que tu cuerpo pa' dar la alegría y cosas buenas. Dale a tu cuerpo alegría Macarena, eh Macarena. Dale a tu cuerpo alegría Macarena, que tu cuerpo pa' dar la alegría y cosas buenas. Dale a tu cuerpo alegría Macarena. All right, welcome to episode number six in this series. And this is going to be probably one of the most important, if not the most important episode, because we're going to deal with the math when it comes to looking at population genetics. In other words, evolution as genetic change. We're going to talk about what's called the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And the Hardy-Weinberg principle is a situation where we look at genetic equilibrium. Okay, Genetic equilibrium means that there is no change in allele frequency. Therefore, this is a situation where there's no evolution occurring. Now, for obvious reasons, this doesn't ever really happen in nature, but this model is a great foundation for which we can see why evolution is occurring, or in other words, what is causing the allele frequencies to change, all right? So, really neat concept, and it really kind of mathematically drives home how evolution can occur. All right, so let's get rid of that. Let's move on. Now, there's five conditions that have to be met in order for no evolution to occur. In other words, for there to be genetic equilibrium. Remember, genetic equilibrium means that there is no change in allele frequencies, therefore no evolution. All right, so here's what these guys are. First of all, you got to have a very large population. On the previous episode, we learned about genetic drift. Genetic drift is defined as the random change in allele frequencies, and this only affects small populations. So if we have a large population, we're not going to have any genetic uh, drift. The second condition is random mating. And in random mating, that means you're having no sexual selection. So in other words, not one individual so to speak, is more attractive than another. All right, so for example, we won't have any of those mating displays that we see in birds. We won't have any of the 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 rams or banging each other's head trying to get for mates. You know, we're not going to be fighting over mates. So everybody has equal uh, a chance of having a mate. <clears throat> the next one is there's no immigration or emigration. In other words, nobody's moving in and nobody's moving out. So we have no gene flow. In other words, there's no new genes moving in to change our allele frequencies, and there's no genes moving out, which would also change our allele frequencies. We also have no mutations. Mutations are going to create new alleles. When you have new alleles in your gene pool, you automatically change your allele frequencies, so we can't have any mutation. In other words, there's no new alleles. And then finally, there's no natural selection. In other words, every single trait has equal fitness. Not one trait is greater than another. And right here is where you can see that this model is never, ever going to happen in nature. But it's a great foundation because if we do have evolution, it's going to be because one or more of these five conditions were not met. Okay, So a great way to remember this all, these five conditions are... LR3, no. Large population, random mating, no emigration, no immigration, no mutation, no natural selection. Oh. LR3, no. That's a great way to remember these five conditions for Hardy Weinberg. Smells like an essay question. Just saying, might want to remember this. All right, so let's look at the math of this. <clears throat> the Hardy-Weinberg principle is based upon this equation. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, where P stands for the frequency of one allele. Typically, we say the dominant allele. And Q is the frequency of the other allele, which is often the recessive. Okay, so if you... Make sure that P equals the dominant allele and Q equals the frequency of the recessive allele. Now, let's review what frequency means. Frequency means how prevalent is it in the gene pool. In other words, what percentage of the gene pool would be the dominant allele and what percentage of the gene pool would be the recessive allele. So, therefore, P squared would be the frequency of the homozygous dominant 
2pq would be the frequency of the heterozygous individuals, and q squared would be the frequency of the recessive individuals. Now, to figure out what p is, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase this. p plus q is going to equal 1. So in other words, the frequency of the dominant allele and the frequency of the recessive allele has to equal 1 because 1 is the equivalent of 100%. So if we only have two alleles in this gene pool, together they got to equal 100%. Duh. Oh. All right, so let's look over here on this picture. Here we've got an individual who's heterozygous, and they're going to mate with another individual that's heterozygous. So here we've got our regular Punnett square where we have homozygous dominant, heterozygous, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Your one to two to one ratio that we saw when we were doing Mendelian genetics. Okay, so this box here would represent P squared. You put this one is PQ, this one's PQ. Because we have two of them, it's two PQ, and then there's your Q squared. So this all fits our Punnett square stuff. Okay, <clears throat> now, I've got a, a link that I'm going to show you that shows you a practice problem on how to handle this. Now, when we have our essay part of our test, we're going to have to do some Hardy-Weinberg problems, so you need to be able to do those. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how we do these problems with this demo question. All right, so 1 in 1,700 US, U.S. Caucasians have cystic fibrosis. Well, cystic fibrosis is a recessive trait. Now, they tell us to use Cs. I like to use Cs. They look the same, okay? So really what we need to do is now we know the frequency of the recessives in our population. So remember that the cystic fibrosis, this 1 over 1,700, whoops, do this. That's equal to Q squared because Q is equal to our recessive traits, all right? So if you take your calculator, uh, let's see here, one divided by 1,700, it's gonna come out to something really small, which is, this is going to be equal to point zero, 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 uh, six. okay? Now, to figure out what Q is equal to, Q is equal to the square root of Q squared. So therefore, Q is equal to the square root of point, whoops, let me do this here, 0, 0, 0, 6. So let's we'll take the square root of that, and that comes out to a lot better number, which is point, whoops, point zero two. All right, now, we need to solve for P. P is equal to 1 minus Q. So in this case, that would be 1 minus 0.02. So therefore, P is equal to, uh, I'm going to use a calculator for this because I'm a knucklehead, 0.98. You blame calculators on that one, all right? Which makes sense, right? Very few people in the United States, that's a very low percentage. It's 0 0.0. Zero, 06. It's way less than 1%. So we would expect the frequency of this allele to be really, really small, and therefore the frequency of the dominant allele to be very, very high. All right. So now let's calculate what percentage of our population should be homozygous dominant. Okay. P squared is going to be equal to 0.98 squared. So if you take that, and square it up, 0.98. That comes out to, I mean, I think I screwed that one up times 0.98. That comes out to 0.96, okay? 2PQ is going to be equal to 2 times 0.98 times 0 0.02. So 2 times 0.98 times 0.02 is going to be equal to 0 0.04. I'm doing some rounding here. And we've already figured out what Q squared is, which is 0 0.006. So let's add all these up. 0 0.96 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04 
plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.0006 is going to come out to, so if I took p squared, let me come over here and do this. So p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1.006, okay? Now, that's going to round to 1. We've basically taken into account all of our uh, allele frequencies. Now, if we were to look at a next generation and we would find out that <clears throat> um, maybe this number of Q squared increases, we would go back to our Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium conditions and we would discover which of those five is causing this to happen. All right? And so the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium principle gives us a mathematical model to measure how and how fast evolution is occurring. And plus, when we have those five conditions, we have a reason for this to happen. All right, All right that's going to end this episode. I want you to review this one a couple of times, uh, maybe at least once, because you got to know how to do this math, because we're going to do plenty of worksheets for this, and you're going to have some essay questions where you need to be able to do the math on this. Plus, we have a really cool lab where we, we get to play with this, uh, this principle. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.